In this activity, we have explored the concept of buoyancy and density. We have seen what happens when an arrangement of a string with a tiny balloon at one end and a nut, which is a weight, at the other end is submerged. The balance between the two was made such that the forces behind sinking and floating almost balanced one another. We were then able to manipulate this arrangement to cause the string with balloon to sink underwater or to float by only pressing of the bottle. Here are some experiments and variations. The few variations possible with this activity are to manipulate the amount of air in the balloon such that it only floats and the nut is not able to touch the bottom of the bottle. The other possible variation is to reduce the amount of air to a point that it remains submerged or to increase the counterweight such that the balloon is not able to float no matter how much we agitate the bottle. The arrangement will then be in a type of equilibrium with the balloon either constantly floating on the top of the water or the nut constantly keeping the balloon submerged. One can also achieve a condition where the balloon nut arrangement is suspended anywhere in the bottle. This will require a delicate balancing of all forces on the balloon string nut arrangement. Can you achieve this? If we were to do this experiment inside oil, cooking oil for example, we may find that the same arrangement of the balloon string nut arrangement will float to the top of the oil. To keep the balloon string nut arrangement suspended in the middle of the oil bottle, we would need either a lighter counterweight or a less inflated balloon for the same effect. If we were to take two 350 milliliter cans of cold drinks, one normal, which is sugar containing version, and one diet, which would be a sweetener containing version, and immerse both in water, we should find that the normal version sinks while the diet version floats. This is because the added sugar, which is around 35 grams, causes the normal cold drink can to weigh more than the can with artificial sweetener and hence become denser than water. Here are some scientific and historical facts. We are all aware of the dramatic story about how Archimedes discovered the principle of buoyancy, which he discovered in 212 BC in Greece. A refresher to the happenings is as follows. King Hiero had commissioned a solid gold crown to be made for which he had provided the gold. When the crown arrived, the king felt that the goldsmith had used only a part of the gold for the crown and kept the rest of the gold for himself using silver to make up the weight. Archimedes was asked to check whether the correct weight of gold had been used. Archimedes did not immediately know the solution to this puzzle, but got the inspiration one day when he entered the bathtub for a bath. As he sat down, he realized that an equal volume of water was displaced from the tub. He was so excited at having found the solution that he ran down the streets of Syracuse, apparently naked, screaming, Eureka! Eureka! meaning, I have found it, in Greek. He had realized that since he could now calculate the volume of the crown and also measure the weight of the crown, he would be able to derive its density. The density, if different from the density of pure gold, would indicate if and how much silver had been used for adulteration in the making of the crown. Density equals the mass divided by volume. French mathematician Blaise Pascal established a law according to which pressure exerted anywhere on an enclosed fluid at rest is transmitted undiminished to every point of the fluid. It is stated mathematically as delta P is equal to rho G times delta H. Delta P is the hydrostatic pressure, rho is the density of fluid, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. 
Delta H is the difference in elevation between two points in the fluid. Based on this law is a classic experiment called the Cartesian Diver. René Descartes is said to have developed this toy. It required a bottle filled with water into which a rigid tube, which is the diver, is dropped. This tube has an opening at one end into which air is trapped. The tube is normally buoyant and floats to the top of the bottle. When the bottle is capped and pressed, the air, being compressible, is compressed by water which is essentially incompressible. This causes the tube to sink. When the bottle is released of pressure, the air in the tube again expands to its normal volume and the tube rises to the top. Pressure can be exerted anywhere on the plastic bottle and the same effect will be seen according to Pascal's law as stated above. Now here are some scientific terms. The first one, upthrust. The upward or buoyant force felt by an object which is partially or completely submerged in a fluid. It is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the submersion. The second, buoyancy. The ability of an object to float in a liquid. The third, density, which is the mass per unit volume and it defines how compact a substance is. And finally, the fourth, adulteration, to make impure by adding other, usually inferior, ingredients. Here are some theory prerequisites. Students should have the basic motor skills to carry out this activity. Students should also be familiar with the basic concepts of weight, mass, gravity, density and buoyancy. Here are some concepts. Volume and density. Volume is defined as the amount of space that an object occupies. If the object is regularly shaped, it is likely that we will be able to calculate its volume by measuring its dimensions. Density is defined as the degree of compactness of an object. Two objects may be the same shape and size occupying equal volume, yet they may have different weights due to having a different density. How closely molecules of a substance are packed together usually determines its density. For example, water is denser than cooking oil because the smaller molecules of water are easily packed tightly together, whereas the much bigger molecules of oil cannot pack as closely together. So even though oil molecules are heavier than water molecules, oil is less dense than water due to the way in which its molecules are arranged. Buoyant force is very much dependent on volume and density because the more the weight of water displaced by a floating or submerged object, the more the buoyant force exerted upon it. If an object is heavy and dense, it displaces less weight of the fluid than its own weight. Hence, not enough buoyant force acts to be able to keep it afloat. In case of a ship, even though it is made of metal, which would tend to sink in normal cases, its shape enables it to float. The hollowness of the boat enables more volume of water to be displaced. Hence, a high buoyant force acts on the boat, enabling it to stay afloat. So to determine whether an object will float or sink, we need to take into consideration its weight and volume in combination. In other words, we need to consider the average density of the object. In case the average density of the object is equal to the weight of the volume of water which it has displaced, the object will be able to stay submerged inside the fluid at almost any depth it is left, much like our balloon string nut arrangement. Change in volume causes change in density. The balloon string nut arrangement which we have made for the tactivity has an overall density. When we increase the volume of the balloon, the overall density decreases. This is because the overall weight of the arrangement remains the same, but the volume increases. The buoyancy which is experienced by this arrangement 
is calculated by the weight of water which that volume of object displaces. When the balloon is inflated more, more weight of water is displaced and more buoyant force is exerted on the arrangement. This upthrust, which is the buoyant force, causes the balloon string nut arrangement to move up towards the surface of the water. As we can imagine, changing the fluid would change the condition. If the fluid is denser, it would apply a higher upthrust for the same volume of fluid displaced than a less dense fluid because the buoyant force depends directly on the weight of fluid displaced. More weight is displaced for an equal volume in the case of a denser fluid and hence a higher upthrust is exerted. If we compare water and oil, water is denser than oil and would more easily cause an object to float than oil. Another factor to consider, however, in case of submerged objects is the pressure of the liquid which is exerted on the submerged object. According to Pascal's law, pressure exerted on a liquid is evenly distributed throughout the liquid. So when the balloon nut assembly is floating and we press the bottle, the assembly gets submerged. This is because water does not get compressed and the air in the balloon is relatively more compressible. This causes the balloon nut arrangement to sink as the balloon shrinks. Here are some applications. A ship is the first application that comes to mind when we think of objects exploiting the principle of buoyancy. It displaces a large volume of water due to its hollow nature and hence has a very low average density. The principle of buoyancy is also exploited very usefully in submarines. They rise by emptying buoyancy tanks of water and dive by filling them up with seawater. Divers use a technology similar to submarines in the form of a variable volume bag called a buoyancy compensator which can be inflated or deflated to change its buoyancy. Many fish have an internal gas-filled cavity called a swim bladder which helps fish to maintain the required depth, not sinking and not floating to the surface of the water. Sea lions and penguins have the ability to change lung volume which allows them to compensate for seasonal changes in body fat in effect keeping their dive quality constant. Aquatic animals actually have a number of strategies for buoyancy control. For example, diving mammals have a layer of subcutaneous fat which they use for insulation and prevention of heat loss in cold water. This layer of fat also acts as a flotation device. This layer of fat may be stored in the liver, in the intestines, in muscles, subcutaneously, in the swim bladder or even in bones. This layer of fat allows fish to attain neutral buoyancy and to remain suspended at any depth while swimming. Airships or hot air balloons are also contraptions which use buoyancy to their benefit. The amount of hot air in the balloon changes its buoyancy. When the density of air around the balloon is more than the average density of the balloon, it causes the balloon to rise and when the density of the balloon is more, it descends. The balloon is suspended when its weight equals the buoyant force. The airship, which could be full of helium and which may be heated to ascend or simply vented to descend, works on the same principle. Hot air rises due to buoyancy and this is the principle behind using chimneys. Hot air rising is also the cause of changing weather. Hot air is less dense because the average kinetic energy of its molecules is more and these molecules move farther apart decreasing density. Land breeze and sea breeze are caused by this varying density of hotter and cooler air and here in India we have an entire season to credit to this effect, the monsoon, the world's largest annual weather event. It is created purely by the fact that the Indian landmass heats up extensively during the summer and this causes a severe pull of wind from the peninsular coastlines, bringing in moisture and hemmed in by the Himalayas, producing torrential rains for four to six months throughout the country, the lifeline of our nation.
This concise experiment helped us to think deeper about the fundamentals behind sinking, floating and the principle of buoyancy. By changing the amount of air in the balloon to counteract the weight of the nut at the other end, we effectively changed the average density of the balloon string nut contraption, which changed its average density. As we have observed, it is a comparison between the average density of the submerged or floating object compared to the density of the uniform fluid in which it is suspended, which determines whether the object will sink, float or remain suspended in the fluid. The fluid can be a liquid or a gas. This principle will help us understand any case which we encounter in the future where we see an object in another fluid. Thank you.